Many of us, no doubt, remember the towering American elms that once lined many of our main streets. And few remember the spreading chestnuts of Longfellow's time, when it was rumored that squirrels could run the length of the Appalachians, jumping from one American chestnut tree to another. Today's squirrels reside in neither tree, because non-native diseases essentially eliminated both from our forests. Unfortunately, today we stand at the cusp of a similar spectacle, as destructive insects native to Asia, emerald ash borer, hemlock woolly adelgid, and Asian longhorn beetle have the potential to eliminate entire tree species from Maine's forests, backyards, and curbsides. With this video, we hope to explain the threats and advise you of helpful courses of action. Early detection will help contain these pests, and most early sightings will be made by informed citizens working with natural resource professionals. All three insects are currently active in New England, with the adelgid established along Maine's southern coast. The threats to our forests, community trees, and forest-based industries are real. For instance, the Wabanaki basket makers in Maine, as well as other Native American communities throughout the country, rely on the brown ash tree for their traditional basket making. The loss of this resource threatens not only their livelihoods, but also a piece of their cultural and spiritual heritage. It is for these reasons that Maine now prohibits the importation of firewood, restricts the movement of landscaping trees from certain areas, and could limit the variety of logs sent to many of our pulp mills and sawmills. Such quarantines will likely only slow the insect's advance, because eventually, spread will occur naturally on wing and wind. Please, advocate for our forests, parks, and street trees. Become informed. Teach your neighbors and friends. Maine's trees need you. I'm Ann Gibbs and I'm the State Horticulturist with the Maine Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry. So uh, invasive species are defined as something that's exotic to an area, um, not native to an area, causes some sort of environmental or economic harm, um, and has a tendency to reproduce and, and take over an area, generally speaking. Invasive species is, is definitely not a new phenomenon. I mean, everybody's familiar with, the, uh, with Dutch elm disease. We are a global society. Um, we, you know, we're, we will always have global trade. Uh, we not only get the goods that, that we um, are seeking, but we get a lot of hitchhikers of, of exotic invasives coming with them. Most of these, uh, these invasive exotic forest pests that we found, such as Asian longhorn beetle and emerald ash borer, have been found in, in urban areas. One of the concerns we have in the Northeast, and especially in Maine, is how are these pests going to impact the forest? I'm Harold Burnett. I'm a consulting forester here in central Maine. I work with private landowners of all acreage ownerships. When I think of the potential threat that the Asian longhorn beetle and the emerald ash borer and the hemlock woolly adelgid pose for Maine, I worry very much about the forest products industry because these are all insects that have the potential to remove entire species from our forests. The emerald ash borer is quite an attractive little green bug. Um, unfortunately, it's um, one of the most fearful insects that North America uh, has probably ever seen. It's an Asian pest. It was first noted around Detroit, Michigan. Obviously, it was transported from Asia into uh, Michigan. It's not present in Maine currently. The larvae of the emerald ash borer feeds on the, just inside the bark of the tree. When they emerge as adults, they leave a D-shaped hole. Fellow foresters in Michigan are telling pretty horrific stories. It may take one, two, three years for ash to die, but it seems that once the insect uh, gets into the trees that mortality is certain. Obviously long term we've got the, the threat of trees being killed and uh, raw materials being removed um, from the forest. However, I think in the short term probably the, some of the bigger impacts are going to be to some of the mills that procure wood outside the state. Officials will establish quarantines to limit the movement of 
wood from infected areas into those that aren't. Places that main mills have been sourcing raw materials that they won't be able to because of quarantines in other areas. My name is Allison Canody and I work for the Maine Forest Service as a forest entomologist. Where insects are native, they have things that put pressure on their population, things like predators and parasitoids and diseases that tend to keep their populations in balance and reduce the amount of damage that they cause to our trees. But when they're brought to new areas, they're often brought without those controlling factors. Hemlock woolly adelgid uh, came to northeastern United States on live trees from Japan. Um, it was brought in probably around Richmond, Virginia, and in the uh, probably 65 years or so since it was detected there, it spread all the way up to our area of New England. The hemlock woolly adelgids are aphid-like insects. They're very tiny, um, and they spend most of their lives attached to the twigs of the host trees, which are eastern hemlocks. Um, they're found on the newer growth on the branches, um, at the bases of the needles on the undersides of the twigs. The insect is covered with a woolly material that makes it look like a fluffy white cotton ball. In Maine, we've found hemlock woolly adelgid established in forest trees all the way out to Pemaquid Point, to the eastern boundary of Lincoln County. Um, so basically the southern third of our coast. Places to our south, southern New England, the Atlantic states, hemlock woolly adelgid has caused high levels of mortality of hemlock in their forest stands. You know, 70 to 80 percent mortality in some places in Virginia and those, those areas they see up to 100 percent mortality of their hemlocks without intervention. I'm Gary Stevens of the York Water District. I'm the Resource Protection Manager. The property here is 1,843 acres that is owned and managed by the York Water District. Um, we own the entire shoreline. Back in uh, 2006, uh, a man was in here. He just kind of bumped right into a hemlock tree that had hemlock woolly adalgid on it. And we've watched it progress uh, from that point all through our watershed. The hemlock woolly adalgid showed up in this, uh, this site here in probably 2007 or 2008 and uh, it's hit this area pretty hard. Uh, it, you'll notice in the trees around us that it's, um, they're starting to die off. The Maine Forest Service has uh, released uh, thousands of beetles that feed on the hemlock woolly adalgid and uh, they've released them down here in this area and I, I don't know, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, what kind of effect it's going to have on the hemlock woolly adelgid population. The hemlock trees, you know, are uh, they a great shade tree. They keep the waters cool. The um, root system um, holds the soil together and keeps the impurities from leaching into the water. Uh, I, I would imagine that's going to definitely have a, an effect on our water quality, but I just don't know at this point. I'm Tom Hurth, I'm the Bath City Arborist and Tree Warden, and I've held that position since 1998. And basically what my job is, is to make for a safe interface between the natural resources of the town and the citizens of town. So that the benefits of having the trees in town, such as um, shading and cooling, are done to the maximum that those resources can provide. The Asian longhorn beetle is a, a, a fairly large beetle that does um, a lot of gross damage to a tree. It was um, brought over on, on pallets, packing uh, material, and is obviously by the name it's from, it's from China and, and Asia. It can be upwards of two inches in body length, very uh, patent leather, kind of glossy. Um, back on it and it has very long antenna that have black and white segments on it. They gouge out uh, the bark ova positions or egg laying site that the females place on the tree. Um, and it looks like, a, like a, a moon crater. The adults when they exit, um, 
There's a, a large amount of frass or sawdust because as the, as the larvae hatch, they burrow into the wood and chew up a lot of the shavings and kick it out. It was discovered in New York and New Jersey. There was a recent one discovered in Worcester, Mass, and it was a, a much larger infestation. The quarantine area in Worcester is now roughly the square, square mileage of the state of Rhode Island. There were neighborhoods that um, lost upwards of 90% of the trees in their, in their community. So it was, I don't want to say scorched earth, but there were hot spots within the community that lost considerable numbers of trees. My name is Lyle Merrifield. I'm a maple producer here in Gorham, Maine, and I'm president of the Maine Maple Producers Association. The, the expansion of maple products now here in the state has is, is really grown a lot in the last few years. Uh, the economic value right now is, is estimated at 12.2 million for the state. Uh, and it's a, a tradition that's gone on in America for, for hundreds of years. Yeah, the Asian longhorn beetle, or the ALB if you want to abbreviate it, certainly is a concern for maple producers. Uh, if I get into my sugar bush, or say, and we saw it in there, uh, all the timber would have to be harvested, chipped, or burned, uh, which would devastate our maple operation. That would only have a huge impact on our farm itself. But if this ALB should get into northern Maine and get into the larger sugar bushes, that would have effect on the maple market worldwide. And certainly, for, you know, for the state of Maine, it would be detrimental to our, our syrup production. Though we're quite fearful that these insects are going to be arriving in Maine. Obviously, the adelgid is already here. We haven't thrown up our hands. Some of you may have noticed the triangular purple insect traps that are hanging in the trees. They're checked a couple of times a year through a program that's funded by the USDA and is conducted by federal and state cooperators, including staff from the Penobscot Indian Nation. One of the reasons that Maine has banned the import of firewood is to make sure that Firewood that's coming in from areas potentially that are infected by the insect um, are not just driven to the state. Part of the reason why it's really important that we engage the public in looking for these exotic species is because there's many more eyes and ears out there in the public. And most of, most of the invasive um, exotic pests that we've found have been detected by the public. And if we can find some of these pests, early, then we can generally do something about them. If they're so widespread, it's very costly and very difficult to, to control them. Please, advocate for our trees. Become informed. Tell neighbors and friends about these insect invaders. Use local firewood. Look for these pests in your trees and forests. And if you think you have seen any of these species, please contact the Maine Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry at 207 287-2431 or email bugwatchme.agr at maine.gov. For more information, please visit maine.gov forward slash forest pests.